All right, this is the uh, Falcon RPM, the VJI 03 version. And I'm flying it with uh, left hand polarized so I can try all the helicals I use for my analogs. So I'm flying with four helical antennas on my DJI goggles. And I'm also using a 7,000 milliamp hour high voltage LiPo by GNB. So like I was just saying, I'm flying the uh, DJI 03 version of my Falcon RPM frame. Uh, on my Falcon RPM frames, I've been using the T-Motor 3008 motors. And on this one, I'm using the 1500 kV version with 7.5 inch props. So this is a little bit more uh, powerful and, and amp hungry than my, my usual long range setup. I figured this is the perfect one to try this LiPo on. Since LiPo is going to be better at handling a higher amp draw than a lithium ion pack, I figured it would be a good match for this setup with the higher KV big motors. On my way out here to get up the mountain, I'm just taking it easy and uh, not using all that much throttle. Just I'm just trying to get some interesting shots of the treetops on my way up and uh, take a look at these cliffs. So I haven't really been uh, playing with the throttle all that much. I'll get back to that when I get up to the top of the mountain. It's been such a warm winter this year. There's, uh, there's surprisingly less snow than usual in the mountains. This is usually what it would look like in the springtime, but this is in the middle of winter. At least there's uh, still some snow at the top. But as I also mentioned in the beginning, I'm doing this flight with uh, helical antennas on my goggles. And uh, you know, I really, I don't think I noticed much of a difference from using the iFlight patch. But uh, I, I think there might have been something up with one of the antennas I was using or something, because I, I swear before when I tried this, I had much better, uh, much better reception. Like I, I thought I just had 50 megabits for the entire flight. I'll have to do some more experimenting with that and uh, see where it goes. I might also just settle for getting a pair of TrueRC X2 Air antennas for my DJI goggles. The X2 Air antennas are really good for long range. I think it must have something to do with the 1500 kV motors on here, but it, I, I also think I have this one tuned particularly nicely. It just feels so nice to fly. And with this LiPo on here, it, uh, it really kind of sets it free a little bit more compared to the, the lithium ion packs. These uh, large 3008 motors at 1500 kV spinning 7.5 inch props they'll uh, sag out the lithium ion packs fairly fairly quickly when when you pop the throttle up this is where in the flight i start noticing that as i'm going around and i'm not sure what i was doing here i think i was trying to reposition to get some different shots and stuff and you know i'm used to flying with the sticks at kind of regular throttle position that i would fly at so I was moving, but I was moving a lot faster than I normally would be. And I'm quite sure that's because of the battery not sagging. So usually with lithium ion packs, I have to give a little bit more throttle input to make up for the amount of battery sag that it gets as you use more throttle. But with the LiPo, there's much less battery sag. And, uh, you know, I'm used to getting, just giving it a little extra throttle input. And that's, that had me uh, flying around back and forth up here doing, over 80 kilometers an hour when I wasn't even really trying to go quickly. And I'm, most of this flight I'm flying quite gently, so uh, you know, I'm not really pushing this battery that much. But even still, uh, that without pushing it much, I could still tell the difference between this and, uh, and the lithium ion packs. I definitely like flying this build with the, with the LiPo. And back to the helical antennas again. Yeah, they seem to work fine on here but yeah they they all they weren't much better than just using the iFlight patch that I normally use. Uh, I did actually I lost video here at some point or not lost I guess with DJI it just froze temporarily. By the time I get to the back to landing at the home point uh, the DJI goggle DVR is about two seconds I think it was about two seconds shorter than the GoPro from having them synced up at the beginning. So that's, uh, yeah, I guess about two seconds of video that I lost uh, because of um, video interruption with the goggles. It doesn't show up in the DVR because there's no frames coming through to record. So it, 
when you're watching the DVR, it just skips ahead all of a sudden, and you kind of almost don't even notice it when you're watching the DVR. The DJI DVR will, it just kind of pauses recording, I guess, until it gets more frames and then it continues recording. So it almost looks like you didn't lose video because it just keeps going, especially if it's just very brief. So you'll be able to see at the end of the flight though that the goggle DVR will actually be a shorter recording than the, than the GoPro is if you sync them up perfectly at the beginning. And unfortunately, I, I didn't set it up properly, so I don't have the, uh, the OSD overlay to put into my goggle DVR here. But I think at this point I was probably at about, oh, I think I was at about around four and a half thousand milliamp hours. I can't remember what my total was when I landed here. It was uh, 6,000 something it registered on my, my milliamp counter. But I did, uh, I ran this same battery through my power analyzer and drained it at five amps. And so at a five amp load, the power analyzer said that the battery put out 6,650 milliamp hours. So not quite the 7,000 that it's rated for, but pretty close. Now this is a lithium uh, high voltage pack. So uh, that was charged up to 4.35 volts. So just a few milliamp hours short of actually hitting 7,000. That's no big deal. It made a uh, 6,650. So that's pretty good considering the weight. You know, when you're comparing it to lithium ion packs, the, uh, the lithium ion packs never really put out their full capacity when you're flying them on a quad. They usually are rated to put out their full capacities when you discharge them at uh, a very low amperage. Now that I'm almost back down to the river, this is my first time flying this pack, so uh, getting back to the river here now, I'm gonna just fly around close to myself near the home point and uh, burn off the milliamp hours and see see what I get out of this battery and uh, see how it performs when it's getting down to its near the end of its capacity. Because lithium ion packs out, they'll, they'll sag really badly when they get down near the bottom of their capacity. But uh, I think this, uh, the Slipo is performing quite a bit better than the, than lithium ion packs for sure. So I really quite enjoyed doing this flight using this LiPo battery. And now I'm just lining up to do some, uh, some passes along the, the river bank here and over the river and I'm just kind of having fun and, and using up the battery. Overall, I think the Slipo did uh, quite well. I was, I was quite impressed with its performance and longevity and the weight of the pack. I, I think I might actually get another one of these, although they are uh, they are fairly expensive. Well, I guess if you compare it to buying uh, two 6S lithium ion packs of comparable size, it's, it's probably about the same price. One of my thoughts though is that there's a lot of testing and, uh, and science going into lithium ion packs these days or lithium ion cells. And a lot of them are being designed to be used for hundreds of uses over several years. But now this lithium polymer high voltage, I'm, I'm wondering how many uses this thing's gonna actually be good for. I'll have to look that up on the, uh, the GNB website and I'll put it up on the screen here. My, my guess is that it's not gonna last for the same amount of uses and time frame as, uh, as good lithium ion cells are. My guess is that the downside is gonna be that the longevity of the battery is, is not gonna be quite on par with lithium ion cells, or at least good quality lithium ion cells. Yeah, so just a couple more uh, low passes here around on the river and I'm gonna be landing. I think it was at around uh, three, 3.5 something uh, for the voltage, between 3.5 and 3.6 when I landed. So that's pretty good. You don't uh, you don't end up having to fly way down at you know 3.3, 3.4 to be able to use this whole battery up. It puts out all of its capacity at you know like I was saying 3.5, 3.6 volts is just the lowest you'll get before it runs out. I don't think the GoPro's on. No. Oh no, it is. It is okay. It just goes blank. Oh, thank goodness. I thought the GoPro turned off. It looked blank. So I could, yeah, I could really tell the difference flying with the, the LiPo instead of lithium ion packs. That, uh, that had a lot more punch as I was flying, 
flying up the mountain there. It's still, uh, I noticed it kind of sagged a bit because of the cold, but uh, yeah, much better than a lithium ion pack. Um, and this one actually is really quite reasonable for the weight. It's only 800 grams or just over 800 grams for uh, 7,000 milliamp hours, which is really a good, good comparable uh, weight to go against uh, lithium ion packs. I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed. I like this battery. Now the uh, DJI goggles with the uh, with the helical antennas. I tried this before, and I swear I had better results before. So I'm I gotta find out if uh, maybe one of these antennas isn't working as well, or see if my my experimental double one isn't uh, quite as good as I'm hoping. But I'll have to do a little more experimenting and try to find out the answer to those questions. But uh, oh yeah, that was a nice flight. I I really enjoyed how that felt with the uh, lipo, with the 3008 uh, 1500 kV motors and the 7035 drops, and the big lipo that that had so much power. I was just doing 70 or 80 the whole time cruising around over the mountain. I really enjoyed that one.